This is an app I've built on my iPad since I've been in quarantine. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to build your own one of these while I'm also in quarantine still. Enjoy. So the first step to making your first app on your iPad is, of course, to download the Swift Playgrounds app. And that is super simple. All you got to do is go to the App Store and then type in Swift Playgrounds and you'll see it pop up right here. Next thing, once you have the app open, go ahead and copy the drum pad we made in the last video. If you haven't watched that, go ahead and check out the card right there. So we're basically going to copy this app that we made in the last episode of this and build off of that. So I'm going to duplicate and then you can rename it to whatever you want. So next part's kind of fun. We're going to airdrop this app to our computer. So I basically lied. We're not just using the iPad. And you're going to notice that once you open this file in a, a code editor, such as Visual Studio Code, you can actually open it as a folder, which is pretty crazy. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And the reason we want to do that is because we're going to need to add an info plist file. And we need to add this because we need to specify that our app needs MIDI capabilities. And to do that, we add all of this, the audio background mode. So pause the video, copy it down, and save it when you're ready. Next, we're gonna go into the package.swift. It's gonna say you're not supposed to edit it. Just ignore that. For now, we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna add the additional info plist content file path. And we're gonna set that to you guessed it, info.plist, the one we just created. Then go ahead and save that. And finally, let's do a sanity check and make sure that everything's inside of here before we airdrop it back to the iPad. So let's go ahead and airdrop it back to my iPad. And once we do that, we can open it with files and rename it so it's the name we want. And we want to make sure that it recognizes it's a Swift Playgrounds module. So I'm going to delete that extra name there. And once we save it, we can actually open it in the Swift Playgrounds app and delete the original one. And then we're going to rename that one just so we can keep things tidy. And finally, we can click on it, open it, and it's going to warn us since we just edited it. That's okay. And we're going to go ahead and press play just to make sure things are working. So let's go ahead and do that. And awesome, it works. So why did we go through all that? Well, it's because the Playgrounds app allows us to add simple capabilities such as the device microphone and the camera. But what we can't add is a MIDI capability. We need background modes to do that. And if you're gonna make a drum sequencer, we kind of need MIDI for that. So Apple, if you're watching this, please add a background modes capability to the Playgrounds app so that way we don't have to go through this hassle again. Thanks. So right now we have a functional drum pad, which is great, but we're gonna need to change that in the look of it so that we can make a sequencer. So first thing we're gonna do is replace this is pressed by is on because we're not gonna be pressing it anymore, but rather kind of toggling the square. And then we're also going to add an is active, which is going to come in handy later. And this one, make sure not to make it private. So this is active is going to go down here. Basically, we're going to show a filled square if the button is active and a empty square if it's not active. And this is different from if it's on. If it's on, we're going to replace this gesture here. So instead of having a gesture, we're going to say when we tap on that button, we're going to toggle whether it's on, which is gonna change the color to blue or white. Awesome, so now let's go ahead and see the results of our hard work. Press play and boom. Wait two seconds, wait three seconds. Oh, there we go. All right, so as you can see, all the squares are white and if I press one, it turns blue. I can also press another one, as many as I want. Now it's time to ditch the old MIDI stuff in our app. So we're going to remove this MIDI object inside the audio, and we're also going to remove its functions because we're not going to be using those. And then up inside the UI, we're going to change that number for the drum pad or sequencer pad now into an integer. And finally, we're going to 
Um, actually, second to finally, we're going to remove the make MIDI functions and all that because that won't work anymore. And then we're going to rename all of these or renumber all of these sequencer pads to 0 through 15. With every great music app comes an audio engine. You thought I was going to say responsibility, maybe not. But audio engines are definitely important because we wouldn't have audio without them inside the app. But also responsibility is good to have too. So to add an audio engine, all we have to do is add a private variable to our audio provider inside the application that is an audio engine. Pretty simple. And next we're going to add an init method where we're going to set the audio output. So we're basically right now I don't know what to set it to. So we're going to just do something random. And after that, we need a way to start and stop the engine. So start is a try method because we don't know if it will work and stop is just a regular method. So we can just call that. And finally, just like we had the make MIDI and destroy MIDI before that we got rid of, we're going to replace that kind of the same thing though, but just starting and stopping the engine. Finally, here comes the final stretch. We're gonna add a sequencer to our audio. We're gonna add a MIDI sampler that can accept MIDI. And we're also going to add a callback instrument. And that will allow us to basically take note events and turn those into UI updates so we can make our buttons all colorful and pretty when the notes go. And we're also gonna have a publisher that publishes the active button, the button that's being played. So for that callback, we're gonna have that status note velocity as all MIDI works. And then we're gonna do if status is 144, note on, and else if status is note off, 128. So for the note on, we're gonna do some stuff that's going to get the note being played and play the sampler. And for the off, we're gonna just do pretty much the opposite and reset the button. And finally, we set that callback to the MIDI callback instrument so that it can use it. And we can also create a little fancy output that will have some cool effects. Next, let's do some stuff with the sequencer. So we create a new track, set the track length, set the MIDI output as the uh, callback instrument, and then we enable MIDI on start. Now, what would a sequencer be without being able to add 16 note beats? So that's what we're gonna do in this code that you see me doing right here, basically just creating a function where we can add notes for each button we press. And remove 16th, you can guess it's gonna clear the note for that note range. And all of these calculations are done in terms of 16th notes. So one 16th note, you can see that's 0.25 beats. Awesome, so now that we got those done, we're gonna go ahead and do some stuff up here to work with that. So we're gonna say, if we tap a button, if it's on, we're gonna do add the 16th to the sequence. If it's off, we're gonna remove that 16th. And if that button is lighting up, well, if it's active, we wanna light it up. So basically we check the button's number and see if that's the note we need to light up. Whoa, that was a mouthful. Anyway. We're almost done here. All we need to do is add a, a play button that can turn on and off our sequ sequencer. And then we also need to do some more setup with the sequencer. So this button here is basically kind of like your little music player button. It's gonna stop and start the sequence when you want it to. Um, so luckily there's some symbols for that, the play.fill and pause.fill. And we can also check that value changing and run some functions accordingly. So if the value is true, if we're playing, then we're going to do sequencer.enable loop and play the sequencer. Otherwise, we're going to do stop or pause, actually. That was a typo. 
Finally, we need a sound. So you can go ahead, go to a website that has free sounds like this one, and go ahead and edit that sound, trim it up nice. I'm gonna use this snare drum. It's pretty much procedure is once you get your sample all nice and neat and cut to where you want it to start and stop, you can airdrop that to your iPad and add it inside the Swift Playgrounds. So with the new Files app that's been around for, I don't know how long, but quite a while, it works quite nice. And you see there, I renamed it to Snare C4. Well, yeah, that's because the Apple sampler will load samples based off this. And you see I'm using AV Foundation, AV Audio Files to load that sample. Whew, that was a mouthful. And my camera lighting is getting worse and worse because I don't have my setup since I'm in quarantine. So I'm just using my laptop. But let's go ahead and test this baby out, see what it does. So, think it's gonna work? Let's see. I'm just gonna do a weird 16 pattern like that. Sounds kinda funky. And you get kinda that syncopation there. Anyway, I think I'm gonna end it off here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn that notification bell, so that way you support the free videos I make. See ya.